Let's look at one more example of how we can use the atom with the formal charge to predict stability of a molecule. So here we have three new molecules. Well, actually this one is a repeat and then we have a couple new molecules and we're again, we're gonna compare them or rank them in terms of stability. And here again, we are looking at which atom has the formal charge, the negative formal charge in this case. So we have an oxygen versus a sulfur versus a nitrogen. In the last video, we talked about using electronegativity we had a carbon versus nitrogen versus oxygen so using electronegativity to help us make a prediction about which atom is best at holding a negative charge in this particular example we have an oxygen a nitrogen and a sulfur now we have a slightly different um, situation in this case. Fortunately, this doesn't pop up very often because most of the molecules that we deal with have the atoms that are hanging out in this part of the periodic table. And we don't often see sulfur in our molecules, so we don't have to think about this very often. But when we are comparing atoms with formal charges and those atoms are in the same column on the periodic table, not the same row, but they're in the same column. So oxygen versus sulfur. In that situation, in this situation, we do not evaluate based on electronegativity. Instead, we evaluate based on size. So let's go add that. Let's write this information down. Um, we will add to this. So if the atoms are in the same row side to side, which is what we talked about in the last video, we will compare those atoms in terms of their electronegativity and we'll use electronegativity to make our decision. So with these molecules, oxygen and nitrogen are in the same row. So we could compare these two molecules by looking at the electronegativity of oxygen versus nitrogen. But because sulfur is not in the same row as either oxygen or nitrogen, we cannot use its electronegativity to rank it in terms of stability. When two atoms are in the same column on the periodic table, the larger atom is the one that is the most stable with the negative formal charge. If the atoms are in the same column, we are going to compare size. And going back up here to electronegativity, the way that we analyze that, the most electronegative is the most stable with or the most happy with the negative formal charge. If we are comparing size, the biggest atom is the one that is most stable with the negative formal charge. And our explanation for this just has to do with the area over which that negative charge is distributed. If we're looking at a small atom, that small atom has a small surface area over which it can distribute that negative formal charge. When we have a larger atom, that atom has a larger area where it can spread out that negative formal charge and that greater surface area increases its stability. So with that information, let's go back and compare again. Let's start by comparing, just comparing nitrogen and oxygen, which we already know how to do. In this case, because they're in the same row, we're using electronegativity to make our comparison, and we know that oxygen is more stable than nitrogen when they're holding a negative charge. So if we're only thinking about the first and last structure, not thinking about sulfur yet, Oxygen is going to be the one that is the most stable of those two, and the nitrogen will be the least stable of those two. Now let's bring sulfur into the mix. With sulfur, with its location, we cannot compare sulfur to 
to nitrogen because they are not in the same column and they're not in the same row. We can only compare oxygen and sulfur because they are in the same column. Sulfur, because it is further down on the periodic table, further down, it is larger, and that means that it is more stable than oxygen. So the sulfur being more stable than oxygen actually takes away oxygen's designation as the most stable. Sulfur is the most stable, and oxygen will be, in this case, we'll say medium stable, somewhere in between. And again, we did that by initially ranking oxygen versus nitrogen, comparing those two. And then once we had that ranking in place, we compared oxygen to sulfur to see where this sulfur molecule would fit in to the ranking that we had already created.